Hi, welcome to Think Tech. We are raising public awareness on technology, energy, diversity, and globalism. This show is Center Stage, and I am your host, Donna Blanchard, proud managing director of Kuma Kahua Theater. We are coming to you live from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu, very near Kuma Kahua Theater. I am excited to introduce my guest today. This is a very interesting gentleman I've wanted to talk to for some time. His name is James Leonin. Leonin, I believe I pronounced that correctly. And he is a singer and guitarist with the band Granite Saints. Welcome, James. Oh, nice to be here. I, I yeah, I'm I'm anxious to talk to you. I uh, I want to hear all about what you do with the <laughs> Granite Saints and the history of them and okay. where you started before them and the formation of that group and because it's a very um, you have a very unique sound. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So, we'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start off with what you are working on right now with the Granite Saints. Uh, right now we have two shows coming up, two big shows. We have this coming Saturday at Next Door, uh, right on Hotel Street. And then on the 27th, we get Crossroads over Hawaiian Brian's. Oh, yeah. Um, we got a lot in the works. In fact, our T-shirts just got finished today. So I picked them up. I'm pretty stoked about that. <laughs> 25 bucks. <laughs> oh, good deal for an yeah. awesome looking shirt. And, um, we're also in the studio recording, oh, yeah. so that's, that's, that's like number one priority next to performing. We're going to try and space the performing out a little bit so we can focus on, on studio work. Oh, do you, have, you don't have any EPs currently? No. We've, we've been together okay. less than... The, this current lineup has been together less than um, five months, this oh. current lineup. Oh, Less I than that. that. Uh, okay. The lineup I had before, it's always been myself and Gary Haynes. We've been together for a year. So Gary and I have like an anniversary. Oh. Um, but as with regard to this current lineup, it's yeah, less than, less than five, six months. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so this is a good time for you to start getting into the recording part of it. Yeah. You played out a few times. Yeah, these guys are very, uh, they're experienced. You know, they, they cut their teeth in other... Um, markets other than here, so it's it's a, it's a nice um, uh, nice diverse group. Okay, cool. Experienced. All right, so um, next door yep. this weekend, and then yep. Hawaiian Brian's the twenty seventh in two weeks. Yep. that's a big stage. Where are you going to be in Hawaiian uh, Brian's? Uh, at Crossroads. Oh, right at Crossroads. Yep. Okay, I guess that's the bigger stage from what yeah. I understand. Yeah, yeah, we're going to make our mark. Good. Well, let's see if we can help you do that. Let's talk about you, and then we'll get more okay. into the band, and we've got some photos we can look at later. Okay. Um, so what is your background? Did you grow up here? Uh, no, I grew up on the mainland, oh. and came back when I was in the Navy, you know, and then went back, met the kid's mom, stayed there for too long, <laughs> oh. came back like probably five years ago, oh, four okay. or five years ago. And when did you start getting interested in music? Um, long, I'll age myself if I if I say the you Beatles. You can just say your age. Oh yeah, the Beatles. <laughs> I don't. I saw the Beatles. My first record, like three, my forty-five was "I Want to Hold Your Hand." Yeah. With I saw her standing there on the flip side. Yeah. <laughs> so. And then as I got older, I thought, oh, you know, this would be a great way to meet. You know, with anybody who says that, oh, I'm doing it for the music when they start. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> you did it for the girls? Absolutely. You're That's the only you person who has ever admitted that. I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> Good I'm honest. for you. Yeah. Okay. And you must have had some sort of natural talent for it. Did, wait, did it work? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> as far as the ladies, no. Um, but I started out as a bassist. Um, I, and I, I played some classic venues, um, like the original CBGBs. Did that. One, uh, once or twice, we did, did oh crap, we, we did some big music halls in Philadelphia. Oh. So, you know, we cut our teeth. And this is a band in, how, how young were you? Oh, I was probably in my late 20s, no, or, or I was in my 20s. You were in your 20s. Do you have musicians in your family? Oh uh, yeah, my brother. My oh, brother okay. is, is a, he's, he's a really good guitarist. And I never told him that, but he's probably seeing it now, so oh. <laughs> we never give each, we always <laughs> tease each out. other instead of uh, 
give credit. Yeah. Oh, well, nice. I'm glad you finally did that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's your older brother? No, younger. Oh, younger brother. And, and yeah, he used to write the songs and um, play guitar. And then it was, uh, I figured, well, I'll pick up bass because it's only got four strings. It's easier. Mm. And we had our friend, uh, kid we grew up with on drums. And we were a three piece. We released a five song EP. Oh, wow. Yeah. It, and we were called The Agents. And it recently, uh, a couple of years ago, somebody in France bought a copy of it for like $78 or something oh, like that. Oh, wow. I'm like, hey, don't I at least get a Coke or a pizza or something? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what you would have been happy to have when you were yeah. in your 20s. Too. Yeah. Did you ever study music formally? No. Formally? No. Nope. No, nope, never did. Just picked it up, listened. And um, as far as being a singer songwriter, I started that. Probably about three, yeah, about three, four years ago. Yeah. Because I just got tired of backing everybody up, backing everybody else up on bass. So I'm like, you know what? I can do this. I can write my own stuff. So you decided I'm going to learn to play uh, lead guitar on your own stuff. Well, no, it's, it's uh, I could always play guitar. It was just a matter of creating the songs. Yeah. You know, and being able to put a song together where. It can be presented. It's kind of believe. It. I hate to use the term, but it's like art because it's like you got to be. Cre you know, it, it's it's you get tired of doing it one way, and then you just have to be creative enough to say, hey, you know what? I, I can do this too. If they can do it, and I'm complaining, then you know what? I'll just do my own. It it is art, absolutely. If it weren't, everyone would be yeah. doing it, yep. right? Yep. And, I mean, just the fact that you have the desire to do it. Yep. makes you an artist, I think, but then you do it successfully, and that makes you a good artist. Yeah. So, okay, I have a whole bunch of questions for you then. If you decide, I'm going to write some music, how did you, uh, did you question yourself a at all with any of the music? Uh, did I hear that before? Am I copying something else um, I've heard? No, not so much. I know I take, um, I mean, everything in rock and roll is, is all reused. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's the same chord structure, it's the same, you know, everybody's trying to capture that same level of angst or anger or love or whatever, you know. But it's, it, it's all been done before. That, that's all. You just have to find a way to make it yours. Yeah. You know, um, because you can, hear, you can hear an artist and he can say, he's the most rock and roll person on the planet, you know, these are my songs. But then when you hear it, it's like... Wait a minute, that sounds like the Eagles. Wait, wait a minute, that's, that's kind of mellow. How can you say that? that's not rock and roll? Yeah. You know, that's elevator music. Well, a lot of those rock and roll songs have been very easily turned into elevator music. I mean, oh, yeah. There's little tweaks here and there oh, make sure. that happen. Sure. It's a little scary to think of. But um, so who do you feel like were your most powerful influencers? Um, my influence is, uh, you name it, uh, Elvis, Johnny Cash, The Beatles, The Stones, Motorhead, The Ramones, The Sex Pistols, The Clash, Social Distortion, my, my Jimi Hendrix, James Brown, it, it all runs the gamut. Mm. Um, because to present yourself, to me, to present a good thing on stage, you can't just stand there and act like, oh, I'm playing guitar, this is so good. You gotta act like you love what you're doing. And I oh, do yeah. love what I'm doing, or else I wouldn't still be doing it. I love it. I love yeah. performing. Uh, it's great therapy. <laughs> it is. And, and when you come home after playing a gig, we'll get back to the songwriting yep. in a moment, but when you come back home after playing a gig, what are you feeling? Exhausted. And mm. I think that's the way it should be. I think if you're going to do a good, if you're going to put on a good show, if you're going to put on a good rock and roll show, you should be totally exhausted. After a, and I'm not talking after a three hour, you know, play 40 minutes down 20 minutes, you know, I'm talking, you know, even if it's just a 40 or 50 minute show, you got to put 110% in. Yeah. In, in my opinion. You it, should. It's, it's, a, it's not just a physical exhaustion either, right? Oh, it's everything. It's yeah. everything. You're, you're physically, um, emotionally, you're just, I'm just drained. Yeah. And I, I, I like it. Because it, it exercises all of that stuff. It right? gets rid of a lot of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I, I absolutely agree. Even yeah. if you're singing a love song, 
you can pour anger into you know whatever yeah. is going on with you that day into yeah. it. Okay, which makes me wonder. There's uh, there's been a a big shift in music over the last sixty years. Most songs used to be written in a major key. <laughs> we used to, yep. and we all associate a major key with happy music. Now almost all of the music coming out is written in a minor key. Yeah. And so when you start off with Beatles and Elvis, you start off major key. I love major keys. I love major keys, yeah. and I love three chords, and I love four four time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so nice. I don't get lost. <laughs> Some of the coolest songs on uh, ever written have been, you know, no more than four chords, you know, four changes, and as long as you play it loud, <laughs> people are gonna they're gonna like it. They'll dig it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So you decided that you wanted to start your own music, mm -hmm. uh, start writing your own music, and did you feel any trepidation the first time you let someone else hear that? Oh, sure. Because when, when you play with a band, I started out uh, uh, acoustically. Um, when you start out with a band, you got everybody covering you. You know, you can make a mistake and nobody's going to notice this difference because everybody else is so loud. Uh, when you get out there with your songs on an acoustic by yourself, it's like you're naked. It's like, yeah. it's like okay, okay. <laughs> but so yeah, there was some trepidation. But then once I eased into it, I was like, okay, let me let me build, let me build off of this. See what I can do to make it better. Do you still play out on your own sometimes? I try not to. Um, just because I, I just don't have the. I just don't have it with me, on me right now, uh. or in me. I don't have it in me to do it right now. Right, right now my focus is on um, the Granite Saints and how we can move forward. And we want to hit major markets. We don't just want to be, you know, big here in the state. We want to hit major markets. Yeah. And that's our that's our goal. That's yeah. our plan. You'll be touring around someday then. Yeah. Not that we want to be rock stars. We just want to get our music out. And if we tour and we're, you know, being a rock star is a byproduct, then so be it. I'll just need a massage therapist after every show. Yeah, <laughs> that's part of what you get when yeah. you tour, apparently. Yeah, yeah. I'll the, throw it in the rider. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I would. Yeah, too, please. Yeah. Um, I, okay, um, we're going to go ahead and go to our first break. Okay. Because uh, I think this is a good place to segue into that, if you don't mind, Zuri. Um, we're going to go to our first break. We'll be back in about a minute. Please stay put. Hey everybody, my name is David Chang and I'm the new host of a new show, The Art of Thinking Smart. I'm really excited to be able to share with you secrets on giving yourself the smart edge in life. We're going to have awesome guests and great mentors of mine from the political, military, business, nonprofit, you name it. So it's something for everybody. Aloha, I'm Chantel Seville, host of the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii. This show is for you. It's all about inspiring and empowering girls of the future to do what they love, get out there and be healthy, fit and confident. If you're up for that, 11 a.m. every Wednesday, I'll see you there. Hello, ha! How you doing there, lassies and laddies? This is Angus McTech here on Think Tech Hawaii and on my favorite show, Hibachi Talk, with my good old buddies, Gordo the Texara and Andrew the Security Guy. Please join us every Monday. No, it's Friday. Every Friday from 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii. And you can also find us on YouTube, Hibachi Talk. Aloha! Hi, we're back. We're live on the Think Tech Digital Network. This is Center Stage. If you would ever like to join us in the studio here in downtown Honolulu, Pioneer Plaza, you may do so. Just email Jay, that's J-A-Y, at thinktechhawaii.com, um, and he will hook you up. You can come join us. Okay, we're back with James Leonin, and we're talking about when uh, you decided that you wanted to write your own music and you like your major chords, which is... Awesome. Yep. I love that. We don't we don't get enough of it anymore, I think. I think it's too easy to go for a minor chord and say, I'm emoting now. Oh, don't, don't get me started on emoting. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's where we're going next. It, because you know, I, I hear a lot of, uh, I hear a lot of music and it just sounds like it could be it's, it reminds me of the canned laughter mm. from the old television shows. And um, as much I, I think artists today are trying to play what people like instead of creating something and hoping that, hey, I hope this catches. 
You know what I mean? It seems yeah. like they just want to, oh, let me play this, let me write it like this for the crowd. They're guaranteed to like it. That's, no, you write for yourself. Yeah. You, you write songs for yourself, put it out, hope people, hope it catches. That's what, ha I think that's what happens with a lot of artists who, they have a great first album and we can't wait for the second one. You get the second one and you're like, man. Yeah, totally disappointed. That happened with Gaga. I, that woman is, is a very, she's an exceptionally talented woman, and her first album first came out. It yeah. may not be your cup of tea. Yeah. I'm guessing it isn't. But <laughs> she had some awesome music in there. Yeah. She wrote all of her instrumentation, everything, you know, hand, everything was her, yeah. and it was great. And then I feel like, you know, maybe it was someone behind her saying, now you got to please the audience. Yeah, yeah. I, that's what I'm thinking, too, because uh, I can guarantee you one thing. We're going to, however far we go with this, we're going to write for us. You know, we're not going to write for, oh, let's do it so we can get on MTV Music Awards if they still have it. You know, or <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, we're writing for us. We're right. And if people like it, great. And if they don't like it, well, that's great, too. You know, that's, and that's our attitude. Cool. Well, and people are liking it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're getting, getting a lot of positive response. You get in the big stage. Oh, don't get me on a big stage. Uh, <laughs> you are going to get show. on the big stage in two you weeks. You want a show. Awesome. <laughs> So the, when the music that, that you are writing, are you writing this collaboratively with the Granite Saints or are you bringing it in? Uh, it's myself and, and the lead guitarist, Gary Haynes. Uh, sometimes I can write a song uh, with lyrics and bring it in and the guys pick up on it. Or sometimes Gary will come in with a riff and I'll have lyrics lying about and uh -huh. we'll, it'll just click. Oh. And that's it. Yeah, we have oh, crap. We have like twenty song, twenty some songs that came about that way. Wow. Yeah, and um, out of the twenty, we're you know probably fifteen or sixteen. We can just go out and just do. Yeah. Wow, that's a good. That's for less a than couple six of months. CDs yeah. right there. Yeah, not that's... bad for less than six months. Who knows where you go? Yeah. From there. Yep. So, do you feel like your pieces are um, a, a collection? If I heard, if I heard something of yours, and then a day later I heard something different, would I say, "Oh, that's that same group"? You know what I mean? I'm not quite sure. Um, is your sound recognizable? Like oh, Duran yeah. Duran? Oh, oh yeah, we're you working. Oh, yeah, know. we we have a signature sound. Yeah, okay. we definitely have a signature sound. Okay. Yes, indeed, it's Good. loud. <laughs> <laughs> it's loud. <laughs> that's our sound. It's loud. Uh, it's rock and roll music, the way I, I've always interpreted it. Just play it loud, doesn't really matter. If you're a great musician, just play loud and throw 110% and that's rock and roll. Yeah. And the lyrics that you're working with, these mm -hmm. are, do you ever feel like something might be too personal, but you, you start writing it and then question if it's wanted out there? Absolutely not. I just write and... Um, I have to see how it flows in, in rehearsal, but as far as the lyrics, no, I just, I, I, I write it and I throw it out and if it works, it works. Mm. You know, it, 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 again, it's all based on how it goes over at rehearsal. And then there's sometimes, uh, I'll write a song and we'll play it a couple of times at rehearsal, but then we don't, there's like two or three songs I cannot remember, we can't remember, like, hey, how'd that go again? Oh. What's that song you wrote last week? Oh, jeez. <laughs> It'll yeah. always come back, though. At some point, there. I hope. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I feel that way about our... Oh, we've got your um, oh. bandmates are showing up here. Is that you? That's not you. Oh, yeah, that's me. That is you? Yeah, uh, yeah I think so. That's a hat. <laughs> oh. I, I get one hat like that. That's a hat. That's how we know. Um, uh, yeah, I feel that with art... See, now, yeah, it's the hat and the tattoos. Um, you... Uh, I, I, anything that you create will uh, will come back to you when the time is right. Yeah, you know, yeah. you don't have to worry about holding tight onto something; it'll no. always come back. Um, we, ha I thought we saw, I thought saw a tweet just a moment ago, Rich. Uh, then we got a second one. Yeah, Kendra Black tweeted: "The Granite Saints prevailing and ailing music industry." Huh. There you go. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know Kendra Black, but yeah, that's what we try to do. We think the music industry is kind of ailing. Again, like I said, everything sounds like it's like so prepackaged. 
just go buy it. Here, go buy, um, uh, what's the one? Is it, I can't I don't remember the band's name. They're from Canada. <laughs> oh, I don't know who you're talking about. Metal? Rock? Um, like Top 40. Oh, who, uh, Coldplay? Are they from oh. Canada? I don't know. I think so. I think it's them. They're pretty repulsive. Oh. It's like, go back. <laughs> Take Justin Bieber See, with you. I'm not a fan. I caught myself humming one of his songs the other day, and it really upset Okay, I got to go. I <laughs> know, but now listen, he had, well, that's part of he, the hook, mm -hmm. you know, that someone is right. it's not him writing these, right, you know, right. someone is writing a good hook. Who's I interviewing? Um, Jack Doom? Oh, you know, who does the booking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and he talked about in his, uh, sometimes to write his music, he will listen to, like, um, uh, Britney Spears, uh, you know, some That's of different. the younger artists who, but they have someone writing good hooks for them. Yeah. Do you, I, are you concerned yourself with that at all? Um, that, I, like to, I like to make my stuff, even though it's loud and it can be sometimes, a couple of songs might be a little offensive to people just because of the, how I, in my delivery. Um, the actual words? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and how I deliver it. Yeah. Um, it might be offensive to some, but at the same time, uh, you need a good hook. You, you need a good hook, <laughs> yeah. whether it's, whether it's uh, a guitar line or, or the, a drum part or a chorus or, a, you know, you, you need a hook. Yeah. It, it's that simple. It's, you know, it's the same thing with musical theater. You want the song that people hum when they leave the theater. Yeah. It sticks in there. Yeah. And that's what Justin Bieber did to me. I hate him for it. <laughs> I, I, I really do. I don't want to have anything to do with the young man. I'm yeah. sure his parents are very lovely people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so the way you deliver it, your... Um, the emotion that you're putting into yeah. it is what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. awesome. I, yeah, I I tend to rail slash rant, but not in a way that you can't understand what I'm saying. But you just under you you get the the emotion that I'm trying to uh, deliver. Our, our our shows are pretty emotional. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm sorry yeah. to say I haven't seen one yet, but I'm very anxious for Saturday night at Good. Next Door, which Good. is next door to Bar Thirty Five. Oh yeah, and, <laughs> so it's, and it makes, just in case people are wondering. I happen to be down there today. I was like, oh, that's not where it's at. <laughs> yeah, right there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> good space. Partners of Kuma Kukuloi Theater. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, happy you're going to be in there. Um, so, what is next? You're going to be putting together your EP. Yep, yep. That's what we're working on right now. We have, uh, I want to say, we have two in the can. Uh, we're probably going to do uh, another four more to put on the on the on the EP, so yeah. we're pretty stoked. We'll put it on, you know, we'll put it on um, iTunes and whatever, whatever other website that people can pay for and can download. Download, cool. Yeah, get it out there. Oh yeah, because you can. Yeah. Now you know it's yeah. it's so much easier than it used to be. You, yeah. you have to start there. Yeah. And then, are you the person? Are you doing the booking and the marketing uh, as well? Well, we 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 all tried to do the booking. Um, but we want to choose our spots. Mm. Uh, we don't want to just go out and play uh, just to say, oh, yeah, we played this certain place. You know, for us, uh, like I said, our goal is the major market. So we want to do exposure, you know, exposure shows. This way, let's say, let's, for example, let's say The Cure comes to town again. We'll say, hey, you know, we want these guys on the bill. Mm. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. We don't want to just do, oh, we're big in Honolulu. Oh, we're big on Maui. Oh, we're big on Kauai. Oh, we're big. you know what I mean? It's, yeah. as much as I love it, you know, it's still a limited market. There's limited um, places yeah. to go. Well, and there's a limit for your audience, how many times sure. they're going to be able to be really excited to go out and right. see you. Right. Yeah. So you need to spread yep. out a little bit. So I think the next, I think the next goal, once we, once we conquer the state, the next one's going to be San Diego. Oh. I want to get into San Diego. Got some connections there? I uh, may be able to work some. I'd be able to work some. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. That's good. So do you, um, y was the band called the Granite Saints when it was you and, um, I'm sorry. Uh, Gary? Gary, yeah, yeah. initially. Um, initially, when I did acoustic, um, I, heard, I got with a percussionist, uh, Brady Kamai. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Brady. Yeah, Brady great guy and awesome. you know he wanted to back me up and I said hey you know what? we'll just call ourselves the Granite Saints 
just because. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, and um, you know, we we made a we made a, 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 a small splash, you know, but uh, I wanted to take it to another level. Okay, so then you reach. Did you reach out to people, or did people tell me a little bit about uh, the making? Oh, okay, of the band. The, about the making of the band. First, uh, again, it was just Brady and myself. I did this one song called Mary Jane, and you can figure out what that's all about. And, you know, it's about Mary Jane, and um, a love song, <laughs> a fast, loud love song. Nice. Um, but then, I, so I did a rough draft of it, and somehow, Gary, my guitar player, he's like, "Oh, that's a cool song," and he put some slide to it. I was like, oh, okay. So we started out like that. And then we had, you know, various bassists and drummers come in. And then all of a sudden, Nathan, we call him 8-Ball, he's like, hey, he, he, oh, he also plays with the Aldo Rays. Yeah. He's like, hey, do you guys mind if I play with you? I'm like, yeah, sure, come on, let's, let's see how it works. Um, and it worked. And then we were, the drummer we were playing with, we needed to go, um, we love the guy, Al, but we needed a bigger, more... Oh, robust uh, yeah, sound. Yeah, uh, yeah, more driving. And that's when Brian, he used to play with Sire, he said, hey, you mind if I, how about I play with you guys? And oh. it just gelled. Uh, so it's the four of us now, myself, Nate, Gary, and Brian. That is so awesome. Do you know how hard some people work to get a band together? It's and like trying to get in a good relationship. <laughs> it's like trying to get up a good girlfriend, good bo <laughs> what, <laughs> what happens. Don't you sing in my tune. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that is so awesome that it came together. I mean, yeah. People work long and hard to make that happen. And everyone in the band sees the same vision moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. We're all on the same page musically and, and how we want to we go forward. That is awesome. Then that is exactly what... It's going to happen. You're going to move forward. Congratulations. Uh, I hope so. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm, we got to wrap up. I'm really okay. looking forward to seeing you guys on Saturday yeah. night. Oh, you, you'll, you'll like it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it, I'm sure. Okay, thank you very much for being here, yeah, James. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us here on Center Stage. There's a few other people I would like to thank. Rich Prapus, who is our floor manager, who's right over there. Thank you, Rich. I'd like to thank our studio overlord, Zuri Bender, who is in my ear, and Jay Fidel, who somehow manages to put all of this together. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week on Center Stage. Bye.